my name is Ida Sitke. I have worked with glass for uh, 14 years. So as a glass blower and glass artist, uh, I need a studio with a really hot kiln, a furnace. Uh, so that's not the kind of equipment you can have at home. Um, therefore, I rent studio space, I rent uh, um, time in glass studios. Uh, where I get to produce my work. Um, for my functional work, uh, I finish the work in the glass studio. Um, but for my artwork, I bring it back here to my studio and I sometimes combine it with other materials uh, like um, expandable foam and uh, concrete, um, which is quite interesting. So when I was uh, three years old, I told my parents that I wanted to become a glass blower. And I've always been a quite uh, decisive person, even as a child. So I, I started glass school in Sweden when I was 16 years old. It was a very technical school, I sort of trained to become a factory worker. Um, during those three years, or actually quite early during school, I realized that I never wanted to become a factory worker. But the glass, the material, was mesmerizing to me. And I realized this is for sure what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So during, the, during those uh, three years at school, uh, we did internships abroad. So I got to travel to other studios in Scotland and Japan, in Paris, in Amsterdam, uh, and I experienced a lot of different ways of working with glass. And I realized that you could also use glass in a more artistic way. It didn't have to be bound by all these traditions and rules that we were taught at the school in Sweden. During my final internship, uh, which was uh, with a teacher, Mia Lersi, in um, Amsterdam at the Rietveld Academy, I realized that I wanted to jump from the traditional uh, technical glass and into the contemporary and conceptual glass. So after, after glass school, I, I got accepted to the Rietveld Academy. That was the beginning of getting me to where I am today. I really like to use glass uh, to portray more difficult, hurtful and serious topics because glass is often a material that is uh, considered to be pretty and beautiful and it's always nice. Uh, so to be able to create a sense of discomfort by using glass, um, it just makes the, the contrast, it makes the effect so much uh, more impactful, I think. When I make my functional wear, I usually find my inspiration in nature. Uh, I love being outside, um, hiking, swimming. Uh, it's been a part of my life since I was a child. Uh, and I always find peace when I'm outside. And I like to kind of, I try to transfer that feeling into my objects to bring the same feeling inside. Um, so for example, I have these, uh, these glasses that I blow into snow and they pick up uh, a texture from the snow. Um, or I, I've created a series called Squeeze where I try to assemble the movement of roots on the ground in the forest. But for my artistic practice, uh, most of my inspiration comes from a personal place. I work with um, quite heavy um, subjects uh, often regarding mental health and uh, I created this series of work uh, in 2019 uh, called um, they call them monsters um, they are five um, manifestations of anxiety I sort of try to translate them because it's all abstract it's something something that's very difficult for a lot of people to, to understand. I'm trying to make it more tangible. For me, it's important to make, uh, make work that speaks about these topics. Um, I want people to feel less shame. 
um, I want there to be more understanding uh, towards each other. And I feel like art is a good um, medium to, to speak through. It's an opportunity to voice uh, important subjects. My most recent project is the series Genomslag. Uh, it resulted in quite a few exhibitions. Uh, I got accepted to both Årsutstillingen and Höstutstillingen and Romeriksutstillingen with works from that series last year. And um, uh, this year, two of the works were also chosen uh, to be part of a group show in Bergen called I and We. And then later this summer also uh, at um, Galerie Bakfasaden in Kragra. So they're all traveling quite a bit. They are beings that I created. Uh, I kind of, when I work uh, with these topics and my sculptures, I tend to choose a topic that's uh, close to my heart or something that I feel like I need to get out of my system. And I don't really draw, I sketch with the glass. I need the glass studio, I need the material in order to start my process. So I bring the feeling and I bring the state of mind into the studio and then it's a quite intuitive process. Um, so for example, with the Gjennomslag, I took upon myself the role as the abuser by creating these luscious, pink, beautiful bubbles uh, and then ripping them apart. Uh, these are the works that means the most to me and that they are being accepted into so many different venues. It's very, it's quite difficult to take it in, but it's, uh, uh, it's fun. I've been fortunate enough to, to attend uh, some residencies during the years, which is something I enjoy a lot. It combines two of my favorite things, which is travel and glass. Yeah, my first one was a bit funny. Uh, I, I, had, um, I was a guest teacher at this high school in Denmark in 2014, uh, where I met um, one of my students, <laughs> was uh, this amazing glass artist. I didn't know at the time, I was like 22, 23. And uh, she came up to me and she said that she really wanted to, to have my work shown. Uh, at her museum, which was the Islip Arts Museum. So, of course, I saw that as a big opportunity, but this work consisted of um, cast glass bricks. Uh, I was creating houses um, and I wanted five of them and they weighed 45 kilos each. So creating them here in Norway and shipping them to Long Island was not an option. So my first residency I got by uh, writing to different studios surrounding New York and uh, Diablo Glass School in Boston. They agreed to give me a residency for a month. So I went there and I um, I taught a little bit in return, taught some classes and did an artist talk, but it was a wonderful experience. And I got to create this uh, artwork that was later shown at the Islip Arts Museum. Um, through this connection, um, I also got to attend um, another residency on Long Island, which was a big international one. So uh, that was very, it was a very wonderful experience because I got to meet so many other artists working in other mediums and connections are very valuable. Um, and these ones brought me to residencies in both Austria and India. I've also uh, been fortunate enough to be given uh, grants to attend both Pilchuck and Haystack uh, in the States. They're not really residencies, but it's, it's more workshops where you get the freedom to create a new work and explore and learn from other wonderful glass blowers and glass artists. Uh, very, very valuable experiences as well. Uh, I'm also part of, uh, earlier this year, I applied for the um, uh, Glass is Beautiful. It's in Biot, so it's a pun in there. Uh, 
um, with um, three sculptures from a series called Conditions for Breathing. And uh, I attended a residency in Czech Republic in September where I tried to take that series further. Um, but I'm not sure where it's going yet. Yeah. So my main goal when I started blowing glass was to become the best glass, female glass blower in the world. But then as life goes on and life happens, you experience things. It didn't, it didn't matter that much to be the best at technical glass blowing. Actually, it bores me a little bit. Through experiences and travels and internships and uh, specific moments uh, in life, I ended up um, craving to make uh, abstract conceptual artworks of glass. I still really enjoy uh, making a simple drinking glass. Um, it's, it's peaceful, it's relaxing, it's fun, it's kind of meditative. But I need to make the sculpture. I need to make art. <laughs>